Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a brand new video of my online. And in today we'll be going over against um, uh, a match against Boggles. So this is the updated version of the UR script that you can see at the top right. Uh, let's get started. Uh, let's see. This is a league match, uh, my first league match, and. Right off the bat, he is playing the blue seed, blossoming sands, and uh, probably he's on slivers or boggles. I thought at the moment, but him playing the boggle confirms actually that it's the only one deck that runs boggle. So he plays the boggle and passes the turn. And I play brainstorm and fall from favor is not something that I'm. I'm happy to see because basically it's a non-efficient removal that I'm not gonna use. <laughs> and now I just need to be careful of not countering the wrong thing. For example, that is uh, an easy target for spells to do, but also is the cartouche of solidarity. And basically that I'm pretty happy to counter because it gives first strike to the slippery boggle and. Uh, one way to lose this is to actually not being able to trade in bow against the boggle. So let's see. I'm um, I'm hitting brainstorm again, and that's probably not very good. I probably should have just cracked the ash bar barons instead. Uh, but now with preordain, um, I have an interesting decision: is to throw to the bottom the spell stutter, which I want because. Uh, it's in essence an orc counter spell that I could have. Now he puts the armadillo clock on this in the boggle, and now it's uh, I can't block at this point, so I will just let it let it hit. He's gaining five damage, and as you can see, I draw. A, sorry, a ninja. So it's time to. The 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 idea right now is to put the ninja into the battlefield while drawing a card, and then in later turns I can present a decision of uh, blocking with the ninja and another creature to trade with the boggle. But at the same time, I don't want to play my aggro right now because I want to keep countering uh, or representing counter uh, for things such as. Um, like this cartouche, ethereal armor or ancestral mask. Those, those um, three cards, and armadillo clock as well, are going to be pretty much unbeatable if they resolve the battlefield. So right now we are doing a good job of keeping him from killing me. And uh, let's pass the turn. And now. I'm not playing the the agor because I can now with with this hand I I have uh, the possibility to counter an ancestral mask if needed or any of the other three drops that he has and he's attacking with one which I won't block because uh, I don't want to lose my spell stutter and probably that's what he is aiming for so I'm putting a a frantic search in of term. Now he's passing the turn, and I'm cracking a fetch, playing the fairies here, which gives me now a counter for, like, how can I tell this? Like, a counter for a tree drop, and I should have a attack really, but I guess my thought process was well, I don't want to attack. I want to rather uh, chum block or block the silhala if it attacks and I have two two to three kind of dead cards in my hand right now so I'm I'm trying to see what I can find with the hour the hour finds me a counter spell which is very nice because now I can start attacking and I will attack with spells too and I don't mind losing at this point the fairy here because I have counters for the two and three drops respectively and I need to start applying s some pressure because he's a very high life at this point S 
so I'll cast a Frank Tink and a Brainstorm and he just passed the turn so right now we have a decision to make is to see which one of the of which uh, like which land do we do we need to play so uh, first let's let's look at our land count we have response for three things he will probably play so at this point I think uh, it's safe to say well either I play the second agar and then and also play evolving wells and keep the spell store and the counter spell up so that's pretty much what we will do play the land play the agor keep our attack first because at some point we will have to or probably I didn't play the agor uh, I guess my thought process was to still keep up the three counter spells and he's just gonna pass the turn or attack in which case I will trade with this with this I don't I don't want to to keep taking unnecessary damage and I drew a, a Nash Barons and the reason behind playing that like it is because it's uh, it comes into play untapped and and later in the game I can bounce it with Easel Boy Works and search for another land so that's not that kind of a big of a deal S but yeah I think that's pretty much what I will do Ca play that, cast the Agor and uh, yep, uh, Scred is a dead card, so I will take the pre ordering and I will attack in the air with my single fairy. And that's going to be the turn for me. Now he's playing Ancestral Mask, and at this point, I'm just going to counter this a hard counter. And he basically can't play anything else unless he wants to run into the spell stutter. So it's al he also can't attack because if he attacks I can trade with everything. Now um let's see. I'm thinking of putting Fall from Favor on one of my guys, but it's not the time. So I'm here to and another ninja is good. And now I can get in some extra damage. Put the ninja into play. Draw a card and then rebounds the I mean bounce the Ash Barrent and then at some point during or or next turns I can I can keep um I can keep like um countering the, their stuff. So in this sequence he played Rancor but Rancor doesn't kill me and Ancestral Mask does, so I need to counter that and having a hard counter instead of just playing this uh, spell steward it's probably better so now I will uh, probably cycle one of like this Ash Barons and I think um, I, I will be playing Fall from Favor on the Hour of Bolas just to get the extra card and I'm attacking on the air again I mean, I I think I can I can survive if he, if he attacks with that thing, which is not that bad. And he has, and I have three counter spell as a backup. So now, uh, what I will do is to play the spell stutter, counter nothing, and then play the second one in order to counter the ancestral mask, which is pretty good. Uh, now I can get I get to start dealing a bunch of damage every turn. Yep, those screds are dead cards, but one of the, the things that could have happened is that me attacking with everything and killing one of the one of my creatures, uh, right, uh, to not get the damage from the lifelink. Now that's w that was in on my plan, but I didn't end up doing it because it was not worth it. I'm playing Brainstorm, uh, getting another from favorite is not good 
I put in the top two squares, I'm getting just back one and probably putting the the other things at the bottom, hitting for four. He's down to sixteen. I'm drawing a card and he's just floating at this point. But he also can't attack easily. So I will keep uh, um, attacking and getting the the extra ninja it's very good because that means I can I have another counter on hand. And now I'm probably discarding the land or the preordain. Uh, it doesn't matter. Or even far from favor. Um, it's dead in this match. Now I will attack again. Not with everything, just with the necessary. Which is three. And next turn I will I will try and kill him. Yep, and lightning bullet's a nice finish because uh, I can ball him to the face and and yeah now I'm trying to counter that because it doesn't matter anyways and I want to put pressure on the field by playing the spell stutter and at this point attacking with everything and throwing the lightning ball to the face it's lethal so that's pretty much GG on game one I just need to attack with everything yep and he considered so let's jump into game two. All right, we got ourselves a game two, and we got the fiery cannonade on our starting hand, which is good. But uh, before jumping into further ahead, let's go over the cyber really quick. Got rid of this, the abrade and all of the scripts because then again those are dead cards. Also the fall from favor, and I set it in the, like the pyroblast because pyroblast can counter the spell and also can counter. Um, the boggles it's not good but it's not bad either I cited in the fiery cannonade and also uh, swirling sandstorm so let's see and yep <laughs> preordain uh, I really want the red so I'm that's why I'm keeping the bobbing walls he's putting rancor in same situation as last time as long as he doesn't put uh, any first strike on this thing it's not going to be that bad now I'm trying to search for a counter spell and I don't have it so I'm most likely playing uh, just the bobbing wilds and pass because at some point I want to to block and then hit him with f with cannonade that's one of the ways I can deal with that block, take the damage, hit cannonade and I'm getting the red right now and also frantic inventory I don't think there's there was any much better that I could have done and here it happened something that that's very bad for me uh, and it's that he plays ram through and I have to counter it so I don't have any other options so I will counter it and even if I have Sandstorm, he is playing Ancestral Mask and killing me this turn. So that's GG on my end, and let's go to game three. As you saw, uh, game with the with the, the the right hand, this match is very much unwinnable on our end. So getting to win the game one was very good, and this hand is is very good because we have our two colors the fairies here and two brainstorms so it's good and here's an interesting decision because I either search for things to kill the board or put one of the ninjas at least on top and I go for the latest because I want to keep digging through my library and probably I, I will uh, this is the decision that hopefully it's going to be the most valuable through the game He's playing the dude, he's passing, now I'm attacking, getting my extra card. Yep, and now I got cannonade. So right now he plays uh, the Viridian Longbow and an Abundant Grove, which is not that bad, um, because even if he equips this, then it doesn't present to me any kind of threat. So. Let's see. I play the the red land because at some point, if things get out of control, I can 
kill everything in the board. Let's see. Let's let's get our our card and with the spelling hand it's also very good. So let's see what happened because at some point I can uh, fire a cannonade and then dispel in the ca in, a, in the case that he is running some dispels on his own. And looking at dispels too, it's kind of a big deal because it means that after blowing the board, then I can have counter spell backup. And I'm getting one more car. And at this point, I really don't want to. I really want to land, and I don't want the pre-rain. And now I do fiery cannonade. Getting rid of the board. I take one damage. Yep. And uh, he doesn't play any dudes, so I'm good. Now I'm playing fairies here. And. Uh, Putting the ogre on top, line him on the bottom because label is bad in this matchup. Unless you want to kill your own creatures. And I'm countering that because if he managed to equip the longbow, it's pretty much over. And he conceded, so that's pretty much GG. Um, yep, let's go to the cyborg again. It's the same, nothing changed on the draw or on the play. Probably should be running one more card against Buggles but yeah uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video and if you do please give a like and subscribe have a nice day everybody bye